In the previous video lectures, we have discussed the differences between linear and nonlinear systems and seen several examples of phenomena that can only occur in nonlinear systems. The next question is when to use nonlinear analysis and control design tools, and when it's sufficient to use a linear model and the linear analysis and design tools that you have learned previously. This is a non trivial question without a fixed answer. What I can say is that if you see that the system displays behavior that you recognize as nonlinear phenomena that do not occur in linear systems, then you know that the system cannot be properly described by a linear model. And if this behavior is essential, meaning that it does not only occur in extreme conditions, but it occurs in the region of the state space where the system will be operating, for instance, close to the invariant set that you are interested in stabilizing, then you should use a nonlinear model and the corresponding nonlinear analysis and control design tools. You can assess this either by evaluating the differential equations or by perturbing the system to see how it responds to steps of different magnitudes and to sinusoidal inputs. Take for instance the example of making a parallel parking control system for a car. We can model the car by the kinematic model here x1 and x2 describe the position of the center point of the front axle and x3 is the angle that the front axle is rotated with respect to the x1 axis. u1 is the forward velocity and u2 is the angular velocity and we assume that we can control these velocities quite precisely using an outer feedback loop such that we here can treat them as control inputs. Then pure geometric considerations give the ordinary differential equations here describing the motion of the car. The control problem is parallel parking. We want all the x variables to go to zero. This corresponds to the car being parked here at the origin with a zero rotation with respect to the x1 axis. So the car is positioned like this. The control problem is thus to find the control inputs u1 and u2 that makes x equal to zero an asymptotically stable equilibrium point. We will specify later what we mean by this, but for now all we need to know is that we want all the x variables to become zero. Say that we first want to use a linear approach and thus we linearize the system. When linearizing a system you have learned to linearize it around the operating point that you want the system to operate in to converge to. And here this is x being zero and u being zero. So we do a standard linearization about x and u being zero, and then we get this model here. What is interesting to see here is that the model, and specifically the first equation, tells us that we cannot affect the car's position along the x1 axis. And if you set up the controllability matrix, you will see that it is singular. So the model is not controllable. And of course, we all know that the car is controllable. So this is a case where a linear model does not properly describe the real system. We need to use a nonlinear model in analysis, and this shows that the car is indeed controllable. The analysis and control design of a car is actually quite involved, and it turns out that we need a periodic time varying signal in the feedback controller. So a pure state feedback controller u being some function gamma of the state x will not do. We need a feedback controller that is explicitly time varying so it is in the form u being some function gamma of time and state x and this is to generate a back and forth motion like this moving back and forth like we all do in parallel parking car and how many times we need to move back and forth depends a little on how good a driver we are and in this way we can parallel park the car making the origin an asymptotically stable equilibrium point. 
So if you, like in the car example, see that the system cannot be properly described by a linear model, then you should use a nonlinear model and the corresponding nonlinear analysis and control design. Also, when the workspace is large, it is often best to use a nonlinear model. The linearized model is an approximation of the original system, and this approximation gets worse the further away the system comes from the operating point that it is linearized about. And finally, if you have nonlinearities that are not linearizable in your system, so called hard nonlinearities like saturation, relay, and dead zone, you can have a look at section 127 in the book to see a description of this, then of course you cannot use a linearized model.